I would literally have to go in there and just fight because these guys, I ain't putting up with this little guy. To hell with him. I don't need the anti-bully campaign. You try to bully me, I'm going to punch you in the fucking face, and we'll go from there. The second Disco Inferno saw us, he goes, hey, it's the Bad Street Boys. And we're going, the fuck is that? Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> Evan would do his big high spots, and Shannon was doing high spots. Well, we can't all do high spots. Somebody actually has to go in there and put this fucking match together. Can't do the vertebraker anymore, because Vince was terrified of it. So I can't do my finisher anymore. So I can't you have my entrance song anymore, because my entrance song is the vertebraker, and I'm going to drop the title. So it's just like this, they were just like, they were chipping away at me. And by the time they were done, I was like two and a half feet tall and I weighed about 43 pounds. I was just like, holy fuck. Uh, anyway, so they went did the creative meeting and I went to catering and ate. And later on, Vince is walking down the hall and he goes, Hurricane Helms, I like it. I go, yeah. So I go to Vince, I was like, yeah, so I, got, I got a problem. He said, well, what is it? And I was like, there's a mask right here. He goes, you don't want to wear a mask? And I go, I don't want to wear this mask. This is a piece of shit. Okay. And he looks at it and he goes, man, this is a piece of shit. And I go, I can wear it, but it's going to come off in 10 seconds. I you know, what do you want me to do? And he goes, hmm. what do you think about face paint? You're a little insider for the shoot. We were the best tag team in the company at that time. We worked so hard to get there. We were over as shit. You know, the reactions were always good. Merchandise is moving. There's no reason for us not to be tag team champions, but for whatever reason, we weren't. And when we finally won them, literally the locker room was waiting for us when we came from the ramp. I just knew create, there were people in creative that wasn't going to let, that weren't going to let the hurricane go any further than he did. At one time, uh, the top three selling merchandise guys in the company were Rock, Austin, and me. I was right up there with those guys. I'm bringing them money. Nowadays, that's all they look at. That's why Cena's the guy. He sells fucking t-shirts. If they had that mentality back then, I might have been a world champion at some point. The death of the cruiserweight division, there was actually two moments with that were the death of the cruiserweight division. The one was my match with Rey Mysterio. Uh, he's the heavyweight champion. I'm the cruiserweight champion. I'm a foot and a half taller than him. I outweigh him by 45 pounds. That and then, you know, we go to Australia, we do a match, and Paul London botches a leg drop, perhaps the easiest move in fucking wrestling history, and lands on my face and breaks my fucking face apart. And uh, that, that basically was the death of the division there. Was it, it took us all out of Mania. We had a Mania match. It cost a lot of us some money, just one botch move. Because you hear somebody, break, you know, people break their nose all the time. You think, no fucking big deal. Right. You know? But when I got to TV and they saw my nose, they were like, holy shit. I remember Stephanie was going like, uh, yeah, you don't have to do this match if you don't want to. And I was like, I'll be fine. You know, we'll, we well, you know, I got the match with Benoit and like, uh, he's like, oh, the fuck, you know. I was like, well, maybe we just, you know, agents like, maybe we just do the headbutt, the flying headbutt. And I was like, no, people are going to expect him to do the cross face. It was, that was totally my call. I talked to him. I was one of the last people he talked to. He called me uh, Thursday night and we had a long conversation. Uh, it's very the weird weird part of that conversation was and we talked for a while we got off the phone and a few minutes later called me right back and I remember thinking that's odd because usually you hear from him and then you don't hear from him for like a month and then you know no, any man and woman will tell you nobody <laughs> nobody will push your buttons quite like the person closest to you and so I, I just think it was probably a domestic situation that went too far it's easy to get addicted to pills when you really need them I don't think anybody ever wakes up and goes, you know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to go get addicted to pills. Nobody ever fucking does that. Once you start to need them and they become a part of your life, that's when they get the hooks on you. I was lucky, I was lucky enough to always be aware of that. <laughs> Jericho was talking about CM Punk the other day, how you know, he's a straight edge guy, but he walks around with ice all over his body all the fucking time. You know, he's just constantly in fucking pain. Pump does. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't want to fucking be in pain all the time. The, the, you know, medicine, drugs, whatever you want to call them, can be used to help you, you know. There's a reason that they're there. Can they be abused? And, and of course, you take a whole bottle of, you know, aspirin right now, that'll be your last fucking headache, no mm -hmm. doubt. And I even in the, go to the bag, and Stephanie was like, I'm mad at you. And I go, why? What happened? She goes, I'm back here trying to do this pre-tape. The crowd's chanting hurricane all night. You kept busting. I had a, at one time in particular, I went to Vince's office, and I said, this show fucking sucks. And uh, I remember fucking Undertaker was in there going, he was up there fucking giggling about it. I was, and it's like, what's wrong? It's like, it fucking sucks. It's like, this whole show sucks. And uh, the first time I ever met him, uh, Punk was coming down the hall, maybe 20 yards down the hall. And Stevie goes, hey, have you met my buddy Punk? And I look, I look down there, I go, fuck CM Punk. <laughs> and then I just walk in the locker room, just fucking around. We haven't been read our rights, you know, none of this shit. What were they taking pictures with all these cops? Every cop's putting out the cell phone. What were they fucking her posing in Jericho and all this kind of shit with <laughs> signing autographs? And I, I distinctly go look at him one time. I go, are we arrested? He goes, I don't know. I don't know what the fuck's going on. I'm going, what the fuck? 
And uh, then they ask us to take that out one picture. Right. You know, the, and we go, okay, I guess we will. And uh, they were just looking for a reason to start some shit. And, uh, you know, he sucker punched me and I beat his ass. And then he ran in, hid in the bathroom until the cops came. And the cops were like, and because, you know, there was blood and stuff like that. Well, especially with Matt. That last one with Matt, I, I, was, I was worried. You were just waiting for the call? Uh, I After all the car wait, I wasn't waiting for it. I was afraid of the call. Sticks out of mind is the uh, suicide video where... Yeah, um... Yeah, he loves attention. I crawled to, I remember crawling to her, trying to get to her, and my leg was just, you know, dangling, just dragging. And, uh, of course, his, the pain was, was immense. And I remember getting to her, and I, and I couldn't figure out why I was wet. Like, is it raining? Like, is somebody pouring water? Like, you just have any stupid, you know. Of course, I just took a tremendous head trauma. The uh, chin strap sweat almost killed me on my uh, helmet. The helmet hooked on the fence somehow, and the chin strap cut me pretty bad through here. I got 180 stitches in my face and chin. I know that's what almost killed me, because and like I said in my you know just delirious mindset at this point, like why who's who's pouring water on me? What the fuck? Huh. And I do like this, and like blood is just gushing everywhere. I don't like Sean Hickenbottom. That's what I should maybe I should have said that. Right. You know, because some people have a problem differentiating the two. You know, he's just uh, I'm not a fan of the politics. Politics is just. A nice way to say, hey, we're lying. Just he's, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I didn't have nothing to sell. Should I came to you guys and tried to help? You know, he just, what well, the story's not about you. I was going, I, I didn't say it was. I'm just, what did you want me? He said, fuck, blah, 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 blah. Now, this is all Christian, and now he's all fucking ranting and raving back there. But here's this guy, you know, showstopper, greatest of all time, all this bullshit. And he can't even be a professional or a person. It's just, be fucking, be a, you know, what the hell? But then go bury me like to the agents and creative and shit like that. I'm fucking the first match on this show. You're the fucking main event. Why do you even care? And the whole Christian thing bothers me because I don't buy it. You know, I, I think he probably believes some of it, but using it as a gimmick bothers me. It reminds me of like Jim Baker and that sort of shit. We're using it just to get money. Uh, I was I was a little kid that had a dream and I went after it. You know, full steam ahead with without any help. You know, I mean, I legit did it all on my own.